As Sri Lanka slowly recovers from its economical crisis and tourists are returning to this beautiful island, they choose to avoid the country's flag carrier, Sri Lankan Airlines. Their planes are falling apart and they're the only major airline without a single plane on order, risking their reputation and competitiveness. So join me today on another aviation adventure, flying a true dinosaur to India. Very good. Thank you, thank you. So guys, and here you are. Welcome to the business class lounge of Sri Lankan Airlines. I've covered this one plenty of times, so I'm not going to do it in this video, but I did receive a lot of questions about whether it is safe to travel to Sri Lanka and whether it is safe to fly Sri Lankan Airlines at the moment. Um, uh, let me show you a, a short clip. This is what the current president had to say. Uh, well, those who want to have an exciting time could come here and maybe they could uh, even uh, take part in the demonstrations. <laughs> they could hold placards which says for the president of Sri Lanka to go home or you could hold a placard asking the prime minister of your country to go home. All that is option that's available. So and the interesting thing is a few tourists exactly did that and they got themselves into troubles. So um, stay away from the protest and possibly don't share your opinion on social media uh, if you don't want to get into troubles. Um, but other than that, Sri Lanka is safe and it's still all right. Um, the problems aren't as bad as it looks like on the news. However, there is a shortage of uh, fuel occasionally, but then I have a bicycle, so I don't care. <laughs> The other question is, a lot of frequent flyer ask me, should I travel on Sri Lankan Airlines even if it's just a transit? Um, the operation of the airline is still very stable. So however, what they do on long haul flights, for example, to Melbourne, Frankfurt, London, they have a technical stop outside the country, most of the time in Kochi in India, to refill the plane and then they continue the journey. But in terms of quality, in terms of service, everything just operates the way you used to know it. Um, they still have the lovely uh, cabin crew on that trip, so you don't have to worry about this. Uh, so how to answer the question, should you still fly Sri Lankan Airlines? Yes, if you don't uh, mind a uh, technical stop somewhere in India, you'd be perfectly fine. So don't worry about this. But yeah, I'll be flying on a 320 uh, to Delhi today. So um, boarding starts in 20 minutes. So let's go uh, and uh, let me show you what the regional business class on the 320 of Sri Lankan Airlines is all about. So today we have a remote gate. And here we are inside the cabin. On this particular dinosaur plane, Sri Lankan features 12 recliner seats in a 2-2 configuration. And as you can see, the plane is slowly falling apart. So guys, and here we are. Welcome on board the Airbus A320, uh, which was originally introduced to service 16 years ago with Air Deccan. Um, I don't know what I pronounced that right, but it was an airline that operated in India, which then merged with Kingfisher. And now here, it's still operational 16 years later, which you can see. So the cabin is worn, uh, it's dated, it doesn't look very go pleasing on the eye. Um, and that's an issue that I have mentioned many times with on Sri Lankan Airlines. A renewal of their fleet is absolutely overdue especially if they want to uh, compete with the other one world carriers out there. However, if there's something that I always appreciate on Sri Lankan Airlines is the fantastic crew. Uh, they're always high spirit, friendly, kind, and did really deliver a good service and no exception right now on this flight. Had a lovely welcome. I was just handed the menu and 
and this is something I really enjoy considering it's a three hour flight, regional flight, uh, you have four options on the menu. So catering is still um, going strong with Sri Lankan Airlines and uh, there's a pillow, there's a blanket at your seat. It isn't the most comfortable, you can't compare it to the 321neo which they fly on like uh, regional or more uh, on routes to Singapore and Bangkok not so often to India but uh, so far uh, so good and that's what always matters to me sometimes okay it's not on the power of the airline because of the financial situation or whatever they go through um, but something that you can have an influence on is the crew how the crew performs, how they treat their passenger, and how they treat their customer. And that is still world class on Sri Lankan Airlines. Uh, that has always been my experience. Anyways, pushing back soon. And over there, because we have a remote gate, is Gulf Air 321 LR Long Range, which I flew last year from Frankfurt to Bahrain. Beautiful plane, a beautiful cabin. So you might want to check out that video um, as well. We then took off on time for a 3 hour flight to Delhi, but it's also a good opportunity to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, so you won't miss out on any future aviation adventures. You can also check out my Instagram for daily travel updates. So guys, half an hour into the flight, I have a hot meal sitting in front of me. I went for the salmon option with mashed potatoes. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, and uh, considering that this is uh, a short uh, domestic or regional flight, I was gonna say domestic flight, there's no such thing in Sri Lanka. Uh, considering it's a short regional flight, it's pretty impressive to have four options, including a vegetarian one. Uh, and I'm gonna find out what it tastes like. Just interesting, when I was sitting at the lounge, I was going through social media, and apparently there were two uh, passengers complaining or claiming that because of the crisis, Sri Lankan Airlines had no meals loaded um, on the flight, which was completely false. Um, I have a few friends working for Sri Lankan Airlines. Uh, the airline just simply ran out of um, options uh, or their preferred option which is usually the case, they don't load. So let's say you have five, you have five passengers on a flight, like this business class right now. It's not like that they uh, load five meals of each uh, offering that they have. They probably have like two salmon dishes, two vegetarians, uh, two biryanis, um, just so they don't waste food. And they kind of have an idea of what people prefer and what not. So, but that's social media or YouTube or, Facebook or Instagram, that you can twist a story the way you want it. So you always got to be a bit careful um, of what you believe on social media and what not. <laughs> uh, but now let's dig in and let's see what the food tastes like. So fantastic meal, uh, really good in quality. Uh, just having a coffee to finish off uh, the, the lunch service. Uh, though when you travel on uh, Sri Lankan Airlines, you should try their tea because they have the most comprehensive tea menu of any airlines in the world. Um, but yeah, also the uh, dessert was sensational. Definitely a contender for the dessert of the year. Yeah, but uh, quickly want to talk with you guys about uh, call bells because they're going off the entire time during this flight. Well, I'm more of a person, you know, I don't like to bother the crew. So 99% of the time, I go to the galley if I want something. Um, unless I stuck somewhere on a window seat in economy class and I have two passengers next to me. So I'd rather uh, hit that bell instead of like uh, bothering my co-passengers. But uh, I know there's a lot of crew watching as well. 
So just wondering, as a crew, what do you prefer if uh, passengers uh, use the call bell or if they come to the galley? Because like, sometimes I can imagine it's pretty annoying if one passenger after another comes and visits the galley, maybe interferes with your workflow, or perhaps you're just really annoyed because people are mistreating or misusing the call bell. So let me know in the comment section below. I really want to know uh, from a passenger perspective whether you use it or you go to the galley. And as a crew, whether you prefer uh, your passenger to come to the galley or to use the bell. It was then time for the Lou review and it was nice to see the laboratory to be stocked up with all kinds of amenities, including a toothbrush. Though it was a bit claustrophobic in there, the bathroom was still well maintained given it has been in service for 16 years. So overall, I will give it a pass. Once returned to my seat, we started our descent into Delhi. And once I reach the hotel, I will share my thoughts on Sri Lankan Airlines with you. So and here we are, welcome back to the A-Loft Delhi Air City and a big shout out to the ground handling guys here at Delhi International Airport. The second I got to the belt, the luggage belt, my bag was there and it literally took me from exiting the plane to the luggage belt, maybe 10 minutes, that's an incredible job, where the whole world is collapsing, especially Europe. In India, they got it right, they do their job perfectly fine so uh, a lot of appreciation for that and uh, yeah great flight as good as it could be for a three hour uh, flight here regional flight uh, uh, amazing food that stood out for me and the crew was lovely once again the airplane a true dinosaur outdated old but I've mentioned that so many times it is time if Sri Lanka Airlines wants to survive in the market and wants to stay competitive, it is about time to lease new airplanes. And I know it comes with an investment, where in Sri Lanka right now, the current uh, situation says, oh, we don't have money for this. But in the long run, that could hurt the country a lot because it's your flag carrier. Your, you, Sri Lanka is all about tourism. So you need a strong airline, right? And you need a good product. So uh, getting those new airplanes and leasing new airplanes isn't as big of an investment as buying new ones, right? So you throw out the 25, 30 planes you have, you get uh, new ones in CO, uh, NEOs, you know, wide bodies, 350s, whatever you desire and you stay competitive again, right? And uh, in the end, the fuel gets uh, cut as well because they're so efficient. So this is something that really needs to be uh, brought onto the table with the CEO, with the politicians and say, hey, first step, we have to privatize this airline, which is on the agenda, give away management rights, and then get new airplanes. This is the only way you can save the flag carrier of Sri Lanka. There's no alternatives. But as this was it, that was my feedback. So I really hope that they're going to succeed because in the end, it's also my flag carrier since I live in Sri Lanka. But this is it. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, tomorrow, interesting, you've got to subscribe right now because tomorrow I'll be flying Vistara on the 321neo flatbed from here to M Mumbai. And uh, that's yeah, going to be an interesting review. You probably saw my last video where I was exposing all the bullshit that was going on and that is still going on uh, within the airline. So see, let's see what a, what a reception I get tomorrow. And then I'll be doing Akasa. Very interesting for my, all my Indian followers. First flight um, from Mumbai to 
Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad. I've never been to Ahmedabad. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to that um, as well. A lot of great videos coming. Um, but yeah, this is it. Uh, if you want to support my work, check out my Patreon page uh, for early access to my videos, to join my WhatsApp group. I have over 100 members there, a really cool community where we share uh, our trips, photos, and have a good laugh sometimes through monthly Zoom sessions. And you will get one of those cool Cahill key rings as well. Uh, so many cool packs. If you're interested, always happy when people support my work because I'm self-funded. I pay for all my flights. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it's <laughs> quite expensive, but uh, what do you got to do, right? If you want to give an unbiased and truthful review. All right, this is it. I'm um, talking too much already, but guys, uh, thank you so much for watching and wherever you're off to, have a safe trip.